We'll call that a Z line. We'll call that an X line. Well, Y isn't going to be too diffi difficult. It's just going to have to be something that goes straight up and down from there. Now, if I really want to pull this off, I'm going to have to keep these lines consistent. Consistent may mean that I'm 100 miles out there and that this Z line, let's see if I can get it straight in one sweep. That Z line and the top one up here are going to be exactly parallel. But I don't want to be a million miles away. I'm going to make it a little harder on myself. It's harder when you get up closer. I'm going to say that this line is going to be a little closer to the horizon line. See the difference? Now, these lines that are going away, do you notice that they're going to converge at a vanishing point out there? That would mean, then, that this line, which is going away, is going to have to converge at a vanishing point. I could make this absolutely parallel, but that wouldn't be right. It already looks just what I did there, because I'm trying to make it so parallel, it doesn't look right. This is lower, so it goes up more. This is closer to the horizon line, so it goes up less. This is lower, so it goes up more. This is closer to the horizon line, so it's going to go up less. And then we'll keep it in two-point perspective, where we'll just make it so that all vertical lines are going to go up. Now, if I can make something like that that is going to be a sagittal plane, let me explain what I mean by a sagittal plane. From the side, this creature might fit into something like that. And that when I'm going to turn this creature away from me, that is just turn that sagittal plane away, that if they were just on a piece of glass, it might be something like this on the piece of glass, but we want to do it where they're not just on a piece of glass. We want to make it so that these feet come out here and they're going to have some thickness. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to actually take the time just to make it clear. You don't need to do the line that I'm doing here. This is just to make it clear that we're making it like a big credit card. Well, this shouldn't be too hard, should it? But I, that is not the way it's going to look in the sagittal plane, right? Because there's no, there's no leg in the middle of an animal's body. So why did I put it in there? So that I'd know where they would go if I were looking at it from the side. And if I want to place that foot out here a certain distance, how do I know what distance to place it? I don't right now. I'm going to need a, a back view, aren't I? And if this back view of this animal's rear end. So I'm taking this and looking at it here and say it's going to be, this, I don't know what this thing is, somewhere between a horse and a cat. What if it was doing that? That would mean the widest point would be up here. Watch what I did. I went down about, what, a fifth or a fourth, about a fourth of the way. And I could just say, about a fourth of the way, right there is going to be the widest point, and I'd bring that out on X and find the widest point, and over there on X and find the widest point. And then I'm going to know that's the widest point. I could do a couple things to make that box. I could just go straight up there and then run it across there until it meets over there, but I've got a cross section for the widest point. Now I need to look at it and rest my eyes a little bit. All I know is that that's the widest point and that it's right here. 
it's going to be where that great trochanter is going to be. Well, if I'm sure of that, why not put something there and say that's going to be the widest point and the other one is going to be over there? I've got it. I'm covered. I could even put a great big paper towel tube in between there. Could even do a little cross contour like that so that we'd see that I found it. But what about that pelvis? I could do a few things with the pelvis. I could just say that I know that it's angled like that. And so if I can take this line, that's this line, right? I'm going to take it on the center there and I'm going to pull it out, but I'm not going to pull it out as wide. See, I'm making it over here a little less wide, wider at that point. I might take it out this wide. And then I'm going to do the same thing over there, take it out that wide. And then I can make it go straight back until it touches where it would touch at that point. And then across, taking a ride on X until it's going to land right about there. Hey, look at that. I've got a top plane. Now, this line was Z, excuse me, this line was Z, and then we went down. This line was Z, and then we went down. This line was Y, and it can't be straight up and down there, can it? So it's going to have to swivel until it looks right, and I'm going to say it looks right right about there. And now I've got... How does that intersect? Don't know yet. We'll figure that out. Uh, what did I do wrong? Something went wrong there. What, what did I do wrong? Yeah, it isn't lining up. This is where when you get multiple lines, you know what it's like. You can get confused. And I'm trying to figure whether I should back up and redraw it or whether I should just uh, figure it out and tell you what it is. That was that was that. And I went out from the center there and there. I did the same. Oh, 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 I see what I did wrong. Uh, I did not place this center properly. What should I have done? So you placed it from the top. Yeah. I placed it there where, in fact, we need to shift this whole thing. Watch, watch the point of the pencil. We need to shift the whole thing up there because it's supposed to be coming out of... The center is supposed to be right there, isn't it? Which means that there will be this here and this here. I, I placed this without taking into account how it fit into here. This is why the better way to do this is not the way I'm doing it. It's to rough it out and then put paper over it like that and do the next stage where you can clean it up. Because you can see through well enough to where you can get that. Whereas I'm going to end up having to, to uh, erase all over. And I'm not going to take the time to. Well, maybe I am. Let me, without walking through every single line. Do you kind of see what I'm doing? I'm placing this part right there, the end of that paper towel tube over there, and I'm seeing where it intersects in the center there and where it intersects over on the other side there. And then I could, I could say, let's pull it out a little bit like that. So that part sticks out and then the other part will stick out so much over there. Okay, now what happens? These things go in, but that isn't the way it goes. Uh, these things actually go, uh, the knees go out, and then they'll come back in like that. So let's take that knee out. The knee was gonna be where? Right about there. So we would want to find where it is on the center and then pull it out so that this does not just echo the shape from there to there. It doesn't just echo the shape, it actually goes 
out a little further. And how do we know where to get it on the other side? We eyeball this over there like that, and that other one's going to go there like that. Do you see the difference in angle? And I can just wrap a rubber band around there like that. But watch what I'm going to do. Instead of just wrapping a rubber band around there, I'm going to say that's a corner. And if this was X going off in that direction, but we've got it aiming out a little bit. Think it through with me. How is that going to change any line systems? If from the back it's aiming out a little bit, is that going to change X? If it's in this position, what happens if it's aiming out a little bit? Yeah. Is an X going to go a little bit instead of that way? Let's do it from the back. Isn't that going to aim down a little more? We're doing it purely from the back. Are you with me? If that's aiming out, this is going to aim down. So if, if it was level, it's going to be like that. It's going to be a little bit more like that. So I'm going to change that ever so slightly. This is X. This is not quite X. How about the other one? The other one's going to be, I have to do it separately. If it were just going straight down, X would be going off in that direction. But since it's going out a little bit, like this, it's going to be aiming more up. So this one aims up as it goes out. That one aims up as it goes out. And we're going to have a change in position about like so. I'm saying all this because I started with something like that. Then I chose to put that corner on there. And if that corner is in this position, and then we're going to pull it out a little bit, I'm exaggerating it, but you get the idea. This line, which was level, is now going to be in a position like this, and the other one's going to be in the opposite position. What about uh, the heels? The heels are coming back in together. So we're going to find a point and say, let's put the heel right, uh, right here. That's in the center. That's on the plexiglass, right there. And then when we pull the heels out and say, just pull it out that far, and then the other heel over on the other side that far, then we're going to run a line from there to there. Let's do the other one. And it's going to go from there to there. Look how this is going to be more the way it looks on the side. And this one is going to be a straighter line over there. Then where will we put the feet? We're going to put one of them over here, and then the other one, because it's, watch this, it's going away from us. This one's coming toward us. That one's going away from us. It's going to go from that point to over there. Look how much more foreshortened it is because it's going away from us. So the foot will maybe fit on something like that. The other one will fit on something like that. This one is less foreshortened. That one's more foreshortened. Now, what I've done is placed great big things. Then when we get in there close, we want to say that if this lower leg were just like it is on there in the center. Now, I, I think I'm going to be able to explain this better. Let's pretend that this is the one that would be right there on the center sagittal plane. 
and then we run this X line across. Now watch this, watch this. That's a knee, and this is a heel coming toward us, right? The knee is forward, the heel is back. Notice that it's going in. That means that this knee is out here, and the heel is going in there like that. Did you follow that? This knee is out here, and the heel is coming in closer. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now let's turn these into blocks. The X line was like that. Now how's the X line gonna be? If we moved this this way, isn't the X line gonna be a little more like that? And what about this one? Isn't that X line gonna be a little more like that? Did you follow it? Okay. Now, that box is in this position, this box is in this position. I'm gonna see more of this back plane of this one. I'm gonna see way less of this back plane here. That X line goes like that, and then that Y line goes down like that. So that gets very foreshortened. That, that gets very foreshortened, this one starts to come toward us. We're using this sagittal plane as a way to find where things would be in the center. Let me do this front one more simply. We want to pull out that top point say right there and on the other hand right there. Then we want to go not just straight down, but straight down and out. So we go straight down and then we say and a little bit out. We go straight down and across and then a little bit out. And we've got that front sort of truncated triangle for where the uh, shoulders are gonna go. And then, how about those arms? Let's just bring the arms straight back. That one's gonna go there, just go straight back. This one's gonna go here, straight back. They didn't go out or in. How about if they come together at the wrists, say right there, they come together so that they're almost touching the wrists. I've got a center point out of which to pull it. And then if the hands are gonna go out, we'd say it's gonna go out and land there, and on the other side, it's gonna land there. Look what I've got. That helped me place great big points. So what's the next thing? To go in and do each one of these blocks as an individual thing and start to see whether they angle one way or angle another. Kayla. I'm just eyeballing it, but you can take more time, right? I'm eyeballing it so that I don't spend an hour and a half up here, spending less than a half hour. Um, eyeballing it is usually good enough unless, let's do a plane here. Let's do one over here, actually. I want to give it a little more. If you're gonna eyeball it and say, where's the center, and you put the center there, eyeballing it didn't work. And if you're gonna eyeball it, and you say, where's the center, and you measure equal from here to here, and you say, there it is, there's the center, it didn't work, did it? Now there's a way to get it exact, and that is with a straight edge to find out where that would intersect, and it would be right about there, and that's gonna be the center, which is further back, so that this one's a little bigger. But you don't need to do that. You can do that. Yves did that. Scott Robertson does that. But here's what I'm suggesting. Rather than take the time to do that, can you just say, 
that halfway is going to be right around there and adjust it until it looks right. That looks right enough. Now, watch this, watch this, we're not done. Let's say that we're going to pull this plane out that far. This distance right here, can you echo it over there? Yeah. You can look at it and say it's going to be about like that. And is that close enough? That's close enough. Nobody's going to have any trouble with that. Here's what can throw you off, though. Do you see how this line right here can make it look like that looks too short and this looks too long? This is what drives people crazy. It's what started to throw me off up here. This is the absolute width of how much that thing sticking out. Forget about this. And then from that same point over there, not from over there on the other side if you were to draw through, do those look about the same? Yeah. Is this one a little longer? Yes, it is. But it's also a little closer and there's a little convergence, so it's close enough. Not going to have any trouble with that. Let's cut in. Let's say that we're going to cut something in here and we're going to bring it in that far. How do we know how far to bring it in on the other side? Well, it helps to make an X line so we know we're doing it on the correct line, right? Look how this one start going, going to start angle down like that. We know it's not going to be here. We know it's not going to be here. It's going to be a little bit closer to that edge than it is to this one, so I'm figuring right about there. Let's see if that looks right. Yeah, that was good enough. Yeah, it's just I'm eyeballing those different distances. This, this, I mean, ultimately, what are we doing here? It looks like we're doing uh, technical illustration cutaways. You know, it looks like we're doing automobile sections. Well, it is that knowledge, but it is not that knowledge to make you an engineer. It's that knowledge so that when you're putting down a line of some cartoon animal that's running, you, are, you have tracked this enough to get familiar with where you're going, okay? And this is a way of slowing down and taking five, six, seven, eight hours to try to figure this out and discipline yourself that way. Now, you've done it. We're just going to amp it up. Make it so that the great big dots of where things are in relationship to this sagittal plane are accounted for and that each one of these boxes that you're paying attention to those X, Y, and Z lines of the individual box. And then we'll try to put some things in there that will be uh, roundish, right? We'll try to put some, some things in there like uh, the way that cylinder of condyles would go or the way that, uh, that ball of a knee would go or whatever else because those, those little uh, curve forms can really add a lot to the machinery. And the exploring around that you do in these hours is training you in the most direct command of three-dimensional form that you can get. Where are the little bumps? And then how do I turn them into a box and get those three-line systems?